Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 11th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be adding in event number 2 into our script and we'll fade out and get ready for a new scene. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So up until now, we have our scene working, we have our button pressing, all good, but it stops after the uh, first press. So we need to continue creating that script to give us different events. So let's get straight into that. Let's go to our scene control here and let's go back into our scene 01 event script. And to do this, we can kind of cheat a little bit because we can copy and paste things we've already done to make things easier rather than have to retype things out over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this coroutine event one, I'm going to copy it all and I'm going to paste it just below and I'm going to change it to event two. So the idea is um, Haruka says I was hiding in the corner so then after we press next we want Kasumi to say something so we'll have Kasumi is the main character speaking there and now we say what she wants to say. We'll say something like oh you startled me I didn't expect you there. So then after that that's where we have our process come in. Uh, we also don't need that girl gasp to play so we can get rid of that and we'll change this event pause to three. So to kind of reiterate what's going on here, after this section here, we change the event position to two. And this next button is what controls it. We don't have position two here. So although we've created event two up here, we have no way of accessing it from our button. So we can take that little if statement, put it down here, change it to event pause equals two. And then event to make sure we have a close bracket there. So now what should happen when we press it, it's going to do this. That's great. So let's have another one. Let's do two event more before we even test this, just to see how quickly and easy it is. So let's create event three now. So let's take that, go down again. Let's change this to event three. And we'll have this back as Haruka and the text she will say is I'm sorry I didn't mean to let's go to the park and loop or uh, the next character which will be in the next tutorial um, let's call her Akane so what's happening here is uh, we've been scared, you know, some more text, and then it says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Let's go to the park and look for Akane. Um, so this is event three. And obviously, all this is all good. So let's change event to number four. And let's create the ability to access that event from our button. And we'll have that as uh, three. So it ev runs event three. So each one of these references a coroutine up here and you can see each event has them talking so I'm going to save that script we might add another one in there I'm not quite sure yet let's see how it looks when we add our fade out in and see if it looks okay uh, but if we go back to unity now let it compile and if we press play we should be able to go through all these events one after the other no problem at all it should all make sense uh, so let's press play and have a look Hopefully, there we go. Took longer than I thought that would. So, first up, she was supposed to be here. Yep. I was hiding over in the corner. Yep, perfect. Oh, you startled me. I didn't expect you there. Okay, next. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Let's go to the park and look for Akane. So then obviously we can't do next because there is no uh, further sequence. So the next event will be us fading our screen out. But one thing I do want to change there, I noticed I put a capital S on the sorry, and I didn't mean to. Uh, so there we go. 
So next thing we'll do, we've got that sequence all in place. Let's create that fade out of our game now. So when we press next, it fades out and we can take ourselves to the next scene. Let's head back into Unity. And if we go to our canvas, remember we have this fade in. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing here, except the inverse of it. And it's really quick to do. So let's go to Game Object. Let's go to UI. Let's go to Raw Image. And we'll call this Fade Out. We hear the T at the end. And let's have this stretch just like we have with the other one and zero out the position so it stretches across our entire screen. Uh, we'll change the color to black and also change the alpha to completely see through, so zero. Next, what we need to do is we need to create that animation. So let's go to our animations folder here and let's make sure we are still on fade out. And let's go to animation. Let's press create. And we'll call this fade out. Save. And then press the record button. And remember to set your very first keyframe as zero. So if you hold your left mouse button down, you can move that around there and just set it back to zero. Remember, it sets that there as the first keyframe. So then two seconds later at frame 120, it should be completely black like that. So then we can press the record button, head back to project and click on fade out and untick loop time because we only want it to play once. Finally, select fade out and untick up here just so it's not on because we just want to turn it on when we want to fade out and there we go, we're all good to go. So now let's incorporate that into the next event. So let's go back to our script and copy event three paste it just there and we'll have this as event four and change it to event four there. This is just the annotation so it doesn't matter too much. So because there's going to be no talking here what we'll do is just basically fade out so we can have the next button yep yeah, we'll have them all good that's fine but what we will do is we will get rid of these bits here and we just need to declare the fade out variable. So let's go to the top again. Let's go here. Let's serialize field. And we'll have game object and we'll have fade out semicolon. So that means all the way down to event four, we can say fade out dot set active in brackets true semicolon. And we just need to add in, here we are. So what we'll do is we'll copy this wait for seconds here. And because our actual fade out is two seconds long, we're going to have this wait for two seconds and then save. So the idea is after two seconds, we'll transfer to another scene. So we'll work with scenes in just a moment. Let's make sure that this sequence works just fine. It should do because we know we've got to this point where it changes to event position four. So then event will be just a fade. So let's head back into Unity. Let's press play. And let's observe all of this scene play out as intended. So far, so good. No errors. Okay, so next, hiding over in the corner. Yep, oh, you startled me, didn't expect you there. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Let's go to the park and look for a carne next. Do you know what? I'm, I swear I do this every tutorial. I didn't uh, add fade out there, did I? It would help. Uh, so fade out. And also, one thing we didn't do in the script, how can we run event four if we didn't do it here? I always get ahead of myself. I always get so keen and eager to um, to play the games. <laughs> I forget to put in lines of code sometimes, but you always figure it out, as we did just there. We, you know, we figured out we were missing a line of code, so we just went back in and uh, added it in. Not a problem. Uh, so let's press play now. And this will work just fine. We know it will because we've added the ability to access that event from our next button. Yes, so all good. Uh, next, I know we're in the corner. Next, start of meeting, expect to see you there. Next, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Let's go to the park and look for a carne. 
Awesome. So we've faded out. So what we'll do now is let's add a new scene so we can get straight into it in the next tutorial. Now, we've only worked in this one scene so far. So before we add a new scene, let's go to File and let's go to Build Settings. And you can see that this sample scene is what we are actually in right now. So we're going to rename this in just a moment, but we need to add another scene into here so as we can access them through game code. So in order to do that, let's save this scene. And if we scroll down to scenes, you'll see that that's it right there. So let's go to File, New Scene. Uh, we want it to be 2D, so let's click on Create. And let's File and Save As. And then let's go to Scenes, and we'll call this uh, Park Scene 01. And let's rename this sample scene to class scene 01. So this is the class in school, and this is the park scene. So remember how we incorporated things into our scene to give a background? Well, we could technically copy and paste and do things that way. So a good example would be if we head back to our class scene, go to our canvas and event system. So hold control and copy both of those. And let's head to Park Scene and paste them in the hierarchy. Now, the cool thing is we've literally replicated that, but this scene won't function the same as what we have done previously. Also, we don't want it to be a classroom. So what we'll do is we'll change this to be Park Back. And then let's import a new image for our background. So let's go to Background IMG right there. And I'm going to import this picture, which you can get for free. If you click the link in the pinned comment or the description, you'll be able to download this image for free, or you can use your own image if you want to. And then drag and drop this texture over here. Uh, I'm going to turn off the fade in so we can view it properly and also consume me confused. We'll click on game. That looks okay. But again, if you want to work around it a little bit, Maybe change the size of it, change the scale, the scope, move you know things up a little bit to there. Play around with how you want it to look. And I think that looks kind of cool. So what we'll do now is save this scene, head back to file, and then build settings. And then where we've got class scene 01, let's click on add open scenes, and that will add park scene 01. You can see over here, these numbers here are important in the next tutorial. So we've got both scenes added to our game now. So the next thing to do would be to keep going with the story. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We'll link these scenes together as part of the story and have our characters looking for this character that's called Akane. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I'll see you next time.